ladies and gentlemen, Jane Monheit and John Pizzarelli. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome, 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 welcome. Mm -hmm. This is something for both of them. You've noticed we've seen a huge increase in recordings and performances by uh, artists now from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, songs from that area. Mm -hmm. We're calling it the American Songbook. Even artists that usually don't record those songs, like Bette Midler, Rod Stewart, Queen Latifah. Why? I mean, number one, the melodies are incredibly strong. There are so many different things that can be done with these pieces of music, so many ways to interpret them. And the lyrics discuss things that are eternal, love and loss, and you know, things that are appropriate to, to every generation, things that everyone can understand. And I, I think that uh, the songs are pliable. So from generation to generation, whether it's y you and me or uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong, everybody can sing all of me and it's always different. And they invite your interpretation. Yeah, right. That's yeah. what they're meant for. Yeah. But that's the thing, as uh, Rosemary Clooney said to my wife, who's a singer also, and uh, you, we've, we've all been together in gigs, and at the end of the night, uh, she said to Rosemary, well, what, do you, what, what should we do? What do we, you know, what, any advice? And she says, just keep telling the truth because everybody knows the difference. Mm -hmm. I like that. You heard the truth in your house early I mean, on. It was beaten into me <laughs> as a child. <laughs> <laughs> there, or there was no dinner. <laughs> what was that like? Well, we had a good household. My father's a guitar player, Bucky, Bucky Pizzarelli, yeah. and he worked with everybody, you know, from uh, out, of the, out of the war, working with Vaughn Monroe's orchestra, and then with Benny Goodman and Stefan Grappelli and Les Paul and Zoot Sims, and a lot of these people came over to the house, and. It was great to experience that. And the reason I liked playing this music was because the guys who were around my dad were having so much fun doing it. I was like, well, if I wanted to be friends with these guys, I better learn Honeysuckle Rose. Indeed. Besides your dad, who were some of your major well, influences? Well, I, I, as a singer, Nat King Cole was the beginning and the end for me. And then, uh, but I, I also like Kenny Rankin and Michael Franks, uh, Sinatra and Tony Bennett. But Nat Cole was the guy of, uh, you know, sort of, that whole repertoire, Paper Moon and Straighten Up Fly Right, Route 66, and uh, those, those kind of rhythm songs were the foundation for me. You mentioned Frank Sinatra. You, you worked with Frank Sinatra. I, I had the opportunity to open for Frank Sinatra in about 18 concerts. The short story is basically that uh, I was led to his room. He came out. He looked at me. I sort of looked at him. I said, it's nice to meet you. And then he looked at me and said, eat something, you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Was, that, that was the no, first. Was that was the giant. first and last thing. You, yes, he you understood that. It was, it was all about pasta. Definitely. <laughs> you draw from all kinds of music, all kinds of writers: uh, Nat King Cole, the Bossa Nova, uh, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. So, what's the common denominator? What do you look for that draws all that together? Well, you know, the thing is, I, I look at the style of music that I do, which a lot of people will say, oh, well, you're, this is old music. To me, it's a style of music. It's not about a certain period of time. It's a, it's a way that music is presented. You can take the songs that you like, like I like the Beatles, uh, and treat them as if they were standard songs written in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and put them in that style. So I like to present, when I find newer songs and I want to put them in the shoes of the great American songbook, I think about, well, what if actually Lennon and McCartney were, uh, uh, you know, Schwartz and Dietz? How would that song sound? Indeed. 